and we welcome everybody. Before um, I open the scriptures, I want to just introduce something that we're going to talk about. Something we talk a lot about in our church is a person of the Holy Spirit. You know, when I grew up in, um, in the Pentecostal church, and in the Pentecostal church, we heard about the Holy Spirit. We were taught about the Holy Spirit. And a lot, there was a big focus. And some of you who didn't grow up in a religious environment, you will relate to this. There was a very big focus on, on uh, speaking in tongues. And I remember being, you know, younger, always wanting to get that gift of being able to speak in tongues when I pray. And at a certain age when we came to the United States, I received that gift and it was so wonderful. It was so precious. It was really, really awesome. But to me, the Holy Spirit was not, was not like a, like when I would talk about Jesus, I knew Jesus. He died on a cross for me. I couldn't get Jesus confused with the Father. Like Jesus was like Jesus. He died on the cross for me. He's my Savior. He's my King. God the Father, I mean, He was very, very dear and very special. But when it came to the Holy Spirit, I would always use words like God because Holy Spirit and Jesus and the Father was always like a mixture. And until I met my wife and she would always talk about the Holy Spirit and she always used the word the Holy Spirit. And I was and I kind of like paid attention to it a few times and so after that I tried to be a little bit spiritual. So anytime I would say something like some miracle happened, I would try to say well it wasn't like not that it, Jesus didn't do it, it was Jesus' name, but it was to the power of the Holy Spirit. And a few weeks later, I would go back to just saying God, God, God on everything. Everything God. And I started to pay attention to my own walk with God. And I started to realize that I'm missing something. I know Jesus in a very personal way. He's my Savior. I know God the Father. You know, He's my Father. He's my Creator. He loves me so dearly that He sent Jesus. But when it comes to the Holy Spirit, it seems like I always get confused. I'm probably not the only one. And other people would say the word Holy Spirit, just that word. And it just always reminded me of the fact, I'm confused about this. I, knew, I know who He is. And at the same time, I don't. We were taught when you speak in tongues, you get the Holy Spirit and all of the power. And I spoke in tongues and well I had the power to not smoke but so is atheists and a lot of other people don't smoke without the Holy Spirit. And when I would speak in tongues, I would feel the presence of God. It would be so awesome, so incredible. But there was just like, you know, there was this lack of things that we see today. And I think it was last year that something started to personally happen to my life where the person of the Holy Spirit started to become just more real and distinct. Well, it wasn't this kind of like just, just God, you know, just God's presence. But it was as though when I would talk about Jesus, my Savior, you know, it's a person that I'm talking about. And when same thing was happening, when I would talk about the Holy Spirit, it started to happen the same thing as the Holy Spirit became more of a person kind of like Jesus and being filled with the Holy Spirit before it was more like this if you pray in tongues and you reach that little level in tongues and those of you who have that you kind of know what I'm talking about you just go all crazy ecstatic your veins almost popping out and you're really 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 loud tears are rolling down the eyes and you're just like speaking 300,000 miles per hour and it's that feeling it's just so good it's so awesome and that's what I would define as being filled with the Holy Spirit and last year of course through um, a lot of teachings I started to understand a little bit more that it had very little to do with speaking in tongues. Speaking in tongues is a gift from God but you can be filled with Holy Spirit without even speaking in tongues and many times when the Holy Spirit will fill you actually you wouldn't want to say anything because it will be it will be so overwhelming and that Holy Spirit is a person and tongues is a good gift that God gives us and it's precious when we have it if you don't have it ask for it God wants to give it to you but the Holy Spirit is more than that and so today I just really want us to understand one thing is that we can know Holy Spirit a little bit more all of us actually have a relationship with the Holy Spirit 
some people have a dysfunctional relationship with the Holy Spirit just like all of us have a relationship with our parents even if some of your parents you haven't talked to them in the past 20 years you still have a relationship with them that relationship is called dysfunctional distant or we like to say it complicated which simply means let's not talk about it at all and that's how many people have a relationship with with God that's how some people have a relationship with Jesus and how many Christians have a relationship with the Holy Spirit it's the word complicated and God doesn't want us to have a relationship that's complicated God wants a relationship that's growing a relationship that's thriving a relationship where you can sense the Holy Spirit's voice when you're praying and not only just you know thoughts coming into your head you're like well this is Holy Spirit and everything is the Holy Spirit no 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 but you actually could see that as he's leading you there is results as you're praying for people there is answers as you are talking that God begins to move I remember watching a story of Catherine Kuhlman Catherine Kuhlman there's a woman she passed away a long time ago about 1975 or 76 I don't remember exactly and so she was one of those people God really touched her and one day she started to really just pursue the Lord and pursue more of God and she decided to study the topic of the Holy Spirit so she started to study the topic and teach that topic in her small Bible study in her school and so she started to talk about this the next day somebody comes to her and says listen Miss Coleman I just need to tell you something that last last night as you were talking about this person of the Holy Spirit I felt a, a heat and sensation went through my body and it felt so good and the pain that I had due to cancer I felt it gone and next morning I had just a normal meeting with the doctor I went to the doctor he examined me and this is the medical report he found no trace of cancer and so she looked at her she looked Miss Coleman she looked at this lady and she says wow this, this is incredible and so that night she felt like well I'm gonna keep talking about the Holy Spirit and tonight since my faith is encouraged I'm just gonna go ahead and pray for people she started to pray for people at the end just saying Lord please heal him the next Sunday somebody else came the next service somebody else came and says I got healed and next thing that happened a ministry grew to that extent when the best doctors in United States who were complete atheists and mocking her ministry became front seat supporters of her ministry people who were doing the checkup when somebody would say I got healed of blindness and they will check they were doctors from the best hospitals and universities and watching a few testimonies this week just inspired me when one scientist comes to testify and this particular scientist not only he's an atheist but he also happened to have a problem with his ears where a nerve in his ears was was dead in both of his ears he was deaf and the worst part is that when the doctor examined him he said the damage in his nerves is so bad that he is not fit for hearing aids so he comes to her Las Vegas uh, crusade and he completely ignorant and just just against all of this he just comes to mock her I mean he's already deaf it's like why would you want to you know just maybe see God's hell but he comes to mock her and just kind of like make fun of her because this white lady walks around like all showing up and everything and so as he is there sitting a scientist she, God gives her a word and she says a word she says there is a gentleman right there and he says both of your ears are being open at that very instant that she says the word both of his ears completely became open so this scientist comes on the stage and he begins to give a testimony she says he says I don't know how it happened my nerves are dead she says this is impossible and she laughs at him he says I know huh you're a scientist explain this to me he said I don't believe in this Miss Kuhlman I'm I'm an atheist this is not this is not real she's like I know this is not real that's why I'm asking you scientists to explain for me and he said now I believe in Jesus our God is alive and the Holy Spirit is alive and he heals people there was another gentleman who came who was a Mormon who brought a this big tank of air because he had such a problem with breathing they had to carry this size tank not like this small one this size tank they rolled that in if he could not live without this tank after he got healed he started to run around left the tank walked away from the stage receiving Jesus and it was just inspiring to me that the person of the Holy Spirit his power is real and you can feel his power 
you know and sometimes people say well it's not about the feelings if so, whoever says that has never touched an electric outlet <laughs> if you ever touch power it is about feelings a lot of feelings crazy feelings amazing feelings <laughs> I pray that it will never happen to you <laughs> yes it's not about feelings about the Holy Spirit but his power is real and I remember when I started to get to know a little bit more of who this person is, the Holy Spirit, and I started to pay attention a little bit more when during worship, during my prayer time, what I would start actually feel in my physical body, just this like light electricity going through. And before I just thought maybe the heater, the AC was on, you know, or something was happening to my body. And then I started to pay attention that this is actually the Holy Spirit. He is filling me and He is touching me. And at those moments, I would close my eyes. This happened many times today even. I would close my eyes and just connect with, with the Holy Spirit and say, Holy Spirit, I love you. Reveal yourself to me. Reveal your presence to me. And in this year alone, just personally, as a personal testimony, this is not as some Bible doctrine, as a personal testimony, kind of when I started to get to know this, we've seen more people, you know, people testify of physical healing in just this year alone than I've seen in my 28 years of Christian life. Just this year alone. And I believe this is only beginning. The testimonies that you've seen and the testimonies you didn't even hear and the testimonies that God is going to do and our leaders praying for people, seeing them healed and seeing them get touched. This is just the beginning. This is just an appetizer where you know people's backs and ears but we're gonna start seeing cancers, tumors, arthritis. This is not for the sake so we become a miracle church. Come on, put your hands together for Jesus. It's gonna happen this is for the sake is so that when people don't know Jesus they can come and they can receive Jesus and meet him in his power in Jesus name can somebody say amen, amen. I remember one gentleman one one pastor who went to one country in Africa and he got up there it was a, just pure Muslims right in front of him and he picked out five blind people from the crowd he put them on the stage and he asked the crowd can anybody testify that these people are really really blind so neighbors got up and friends got out you know and family got up and he asked them all of them can you guys confirm they said yes we confirm he said I give you a bet if my God Jesus Christ whom you call the prophet I call him God if he heals these five blind men you all become Christians if your God the Muhammad Allah heals them I become a Muslim now that's a very risky thing to take right there in front of them in and he did that and he prayed and he had the faith and God showed him to do that he laid hands on, on one blind his eyes were open second blind his eyes were open third blind all five people their eyes were open he said guys my God already healed them your God doesn't even have a chance because they're no longer blind you all have to become a Christian and every single one of them lifted their hand and said we want to receive Jesus Christ that's what miracles are for they're not for the show they are to glorify Jesus and to bring people to Jesus Christ can somebody say amen and that's exactly what God wants to do in our midst that's exactly what God wants to do to each one of us this is not just only to make us you know feel better though it is his plan and his agenda but it is to glorify Jesus and to bring people to Jesus Christ can somebody say amen if you have your Bible let's just take a take a look into the scripture of John chapter 1 John chapter 1 and verse 29 it says the following and the next day John saw Jesus coming toward him and said behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world and let's read verse 33 also John said I did not know him but he who sent me to baptize with water said upon whom you see the spirit descending and remaining on him this is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit somebody say amen. amen and we're going to talk today just briefly about this many people ask always well if you talk a lot about the Holy Spirit where is Jesus in all of this how does Jesus relate what is the mission of the Holy Spirit when we fellowship with the Holy Spirit when we walk in the Holy Spirit how does it work with Je what is Jesus in all this and they don't understand many times that God the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit they are one but I want to show something from the scripture today just one thought from this chapter today is the Holy Spirit is simply as symbolic of a dove in this verse 
Holy Spirit is not a dove just like Jesus is not a lamb. Jesus he is God and he came as a person but in here John says this is a lamb. John doesn't see a lamb. John saw Jesus but he says this is like a lamb and Holy Spirit is like a dove but he is not a dove. So I want you to have these pictures of Holy Spirit as a dove. He doesn't have wings that he flaps with. He is God and he is a person. But I want you to notice in this verse very interesting picture is the dove comes upon a lamb. A dove, the Holy Spirit comes upon the lamb. Jesus who would give his life for the sins of the whole world. We must understand this very clearly. The reason why is because this is not the only time where the dove comes upon the lamb. This is actually how the dove comes on all the time. The Holy Spirit, His contact point in your life is the Lamb of God. When there is no lamb inside, He cannot come on anything else. If what you have inside is just good deeds, a religious status, I'm a Protestant, a Catholic, a Baptist, Methodist or Lutheran or Pentecostal or Charismatic, whatever it is. If that's what you got inside, Holy Spirit cannot come on that. He comes on the Lamb. The Lamb is Jesus. And it's important to know Jesus not just as a teacher or like a prophet like Muslim brothers say or like just a great inspiring figure in the history who helped the poor. It's important for you and I to know Jesus as my lamb. What does that mean lamb? See when you hear word lamb unless you do farming this picture means very little to you. For people in those days the lamb of God Oh it meant so much because once a year they would bring a lamb and this lamb they didn't choose the worst lamb. You know how sometimes you have dogs and cats and you would wish to have a festival once a year where the worst one gets crucified. That's not what was this happening. This was actually the best lamb they have to find. The most innocent, the, the most healthiest lamb they have to find. And on this particular day, the Passover, they would bring it to the temple where the, you would confess your sins and the priest would confess your sins and these sins would verbally go on this pure, innocent, good-looking animal. And then the priest would take a knife and slice the throat and the blood will gush out and the animal that did nothing wrong will die for every wrong thing you did that you just confessed. This happened year after year after year and here is John standing and he says this is the Lamb of God. He said this is that person who will be the actual lamb upon whom all of our sins will be passed on and God will cause them to die. And for people in those days this picture meant a lot. Jesus, my lamb, has to be your lamb. A lamb that takes away your sin. When he becomes that to you. Holy Spirit comes upon you. Holy Spirit can work through you. Holy Spirit can do something in you. It's amazing that in John chapter 7, just a few, a few verses later, John chapter 7 verse 39, Jesus said, uh, the Bible says, but this he spoke concerning the Holy Spirit whom those believing in him would receive. For the Holy Spirit was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified the word glorified here it, it means Jesus has not been yet crucified many times in the gospel of John glorified and crucified actually uses simultaneously look what it says the Holy Spirit has not been given yet because Jesus has not been glorified yet what that means is this the Holy Spirit wants to work through your life but he waits until Jesus moves out from history as a teacher as a good man as a Jewish carpenter and becomes your own personal lamb 
when he gets glorified above your past when he gets glorified above your sin when he gets glorified above your shame when he gets glorified above your condemnation and the Holy Spirit says now I can come when Christ is glorified see Christ and the Holy Spirit Holy Spirit waits for Jesus to be glorified what does that mean glorified that means inside he has to be your crucified lamb the one who died for you when you unwrap that when you open that up something begins to happen the Holy Spirit has an access see most of us are accustomed to think the way Holy Spirit moves in our life if I beat the living lights out of myself if I hurt myself if I like some people go actually physically beat themselves if I just cry if I just begin to confess those sins that I told God already 50 hundred times if I just feel really sorry if I just walk around with a sad face and then the Holy Spirit comes as oh this depressed little child I love this depressed little child we somehow think the Holy Spirit loves depressed people and when he see depressed people he's oh my favorite I just want to embrace this person when you are depressed beating yourself over the things you've done feeling yourself guilty you're gonna attract a spirit but it's probably not gonna be the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit came upon a lamb a lamb now we all have plenty of sins we are not perfect the question is not whether you have a sin the question is whether you have a lamb Hallelujah. everyone has sins but not everybody has a lamb and the Holy Spirit doesn't come to those who don't have sin Bible says if somebody says there is they have no sin they're lying we all have mistakes but the Holy Spirit comes and begins to work when you begin to put Jesus higher than your mistakes Jesus becomes glorified can somebody say amen it's amazing when a lamb the lamb was offered where in the temple right and the Holy Spirit said we are his temple why are you his temple because that's where the lamb is at if there is no lamb inside let me tell you who you are you're not a temple you're a tomb constantly beating yourself over holding on to your sins living in the memory of your faults living in the memory of what you didn't do living in the memory of constantly where you failed at and guess what happens where tombs are at demons are at we see that in the bible a man who had six thousand demons where did he live among the tombs when we constantly live in our past where we constantly hold on to the pain when we constantly hold on to the guilt and shame and condemnation something happens the evil spirits love that and the Holy Spirit turns me and you into his temple under one condition when Jesus Christ becomes your lamb can somebody say amen something happens when Jesus is my lamb the first thing that happens inside of you when Jesus is your lamb is your light goes off in your head and understanding comes in that God is for you now we all know Satan is against us that's actually a very good news because that means you and Satan are not on the same team if anytime the devil gets mad at you or you feel like oh the devil's really attacking me you know what that's actually a compliment that just simply means you and him are not on the same terms that is a very good news but many Christians do not know for sure if the Lord God is on their side and this is why they don't know for sure because they've made some mistakes and who didn't but they've made the mistakes and somehow their mistakes of course are worse than everybody else's mistakes and they feel like God is forgiven their sins but God also wants them to mature and he wants to teach them some things by spanking them and when you think like that guess what happens any problem that gonna come your way you're gonna immediately think this is God teaching me he's forgiving me of course he did but he also wants to teach me he is teaching me now let's say that this problem is not from God you won't be able to resist this problem you won't be able to pray against it you're just gonna say Lord God please help me to endure this as you're teaching me something through this life-threatening sickness and you're not sure whether God for you or not for you 
But when you have a lamb, it makes it very simple. It's very simple. Because you believe Jesus pay the price and God, all the anger, all the wrath, all the disappointment God had with you. All of the things that God wanted just, just uh, oof, all of that, all of it poured it on Jesus and has nothing left for you. Amen. That's if you have a lamb. Took away all my sin. You say, what about if I have problems? It's not God. It's devil. If you don't believe God poured his wrath upon Jesus because of your sin, any problem that happens, you will always link it to God trying to teach you a lesson. And that will do this to you. It will break your spirit inside and you will never know do I go against it or do I just and do I ask God to help me well how can he help me he's the one spanking me and you will always be confused you will never have a faith for a miracle and the foundation of this is this you have to settle in your mind once for all all of your sins all of your mistakes all of them have they been paid for by the cross of Jesus Christ if the answer is yes devil has to back off If the answer is yes, you will say, what about this? What about, but somebody told me, but somebody did that God forgave him, but they still paid for it. Somebody is not your savior. Jesus Christ is. In your heart, you have to settle. He is my lamb who took all of my sin upon himself. All of it, all of its shame, all of its guilt, all of its consequences, all of its sowing and reaping, all of he took. And if the devil come against me right now, I know I have a God on my side. If I can have a savior, but in the moment of my problem, I cannot lean on him to be on my side. What did he save me from? Hell? How are you sure? If he didn't save you from anything else. What about the hell that's here? He is the one that paid for all of my sin. And I can choose to believe that or I can choose to believe that Jesus is the lamb but I some things I need to carry in my own life. Why? Because to prove to God I am really sorry and to prove to God that I really deserve his forgiveness. And you know what God's gonna do? He will let me do that and the Holy Spirit takes his hands off to do supernatural and to help me fight the devil. And I will endure that disease, I will endure that trial, I will endure that constant lack, a constant failure as, a, as God's training. And you will learn something, of course you'll learn something. But God wants you to know, He is gooder than you think. He loves you more than you think and His cross was enough. The cross was sufficient, can somebody say amen? amen. I know the challenge we have and this is a challenge I have, as many times we start to believe in that. And it's in the Bible. I know some of you say, man, this sounds kind of crazy. Because that's not what I taught growing up. Well, we have to believe the Bible, not just what people teach us. But when you start to believe what Bible teaches you, that Jesus took away all of your sin, something begins to happen. When things get hard and difficult, you will still have a feeling that God is against you. And that feeling comes from the fact you grew up religious. It doesn't come from God. It comes from the fact you probably have people around you who have told you that. And what do you do with the feeling that God is mad at you when you're facing something troubling yet you know he shouldn't be because he was mad at Jesus for, for my sake. He should be happy with me even if I make a mistake. He should help me, forgive me but how do I feel when I feel that? Uh, I have an example from the Bible that really helps me to personally to deal with this. There was a guy named, in the Bible named Joseph. And Joseph was like Jesus because he was betrayed by his brothers. A lot of negative things were done to Joseph. And one day his brothers come to Egypt and these brothers, uh, they come to Egypt and because they did something really bad to Joseph, they constantly live with a sense of guilt and shame. Just, ah, we should have not done it to, done it to brother. And something happened. Um, their brother begins to mistreat them on purpose. 
it begins to create a very difficult situation for them and as they are it's kind of troubled a little bit they huddle up together and they say oh, I knew we should have never done this to Joseph we should have never done it to Joseph because God now is punishing us we are being punished for what we did to our brother not knowing in the other room Joseph is sobbing they are thinking God is punishing us for what we did to our brother we deserve these hardships this very man Joseph who's creating these hardships for them in the other room is sobbing out of his deep love for them he wasn't trying to make their life difficult and he wasn't even trying to teach them a lesson he actually loved them so much that when he saw his younger brother the bible says he couldn't stand in their presence get to get a private room to cry he wasn't mad he didn't have to leave so he can see the anger he had to leave so he could relieve the love so they won't see it and all of this time they thought he's mad at us not knowing madly in love yes not mad your feelings are true but they are not truth your feelings that God is so far away your feelings that oh he might not be for me because look I just got an accident I just got pulled over I got a ticket look I was taking this test and I couldn't pass it look the challenges are with my parents right now it seems like we are not coming to mutual understanding look I'm just on such a heavy stress and load in school things are so hard at my work right now God just might not be on my side that is your feelings they might be true but remember your feelings are not the truth job felt like god was against him at the very same time when god gathered hell and demons and the devil and he bragged about job and job's thinking god is so against me god is so against me and god in heaven throws a bragging party for job your feelings are not the best indication of how god feels about you period it's what he says and what he thinks and it's what he feels it's not what you feel about God can somebody say amen and once some of you will get married you will know this to be true because one thing about being married a benefit of being married to, to a female is many times you will discover how true and real their feelings are and how those feelings can also be very wrong your feelings can be very strong and very real and at the same time very wrong and if you can be okay with that you will know one thing I'm feeling down I'm feeling like God is letting me down but I know he's on my side I know in whom I have believed I know my Redeemer lives can somebody say amen I just want to encourage you tonight to let you know God is for you because of Jesus because of Jesus he is on your side and if he's on your side any sickness you're facing any disappointment you're facing with God you can overcome even if God forbid certain things don't happen maybe certain things don't turn around you know what turned around you gained somebody on your side it's one thing to fight the devil it's another thing when you think you're fighting God when you're not sure of God is on your side you don't need to go to someone you need to go to the Bible take the verses where God said I condemn you not sink in them so deeply until faith arises inside of you that the cross of Jesus Christ was enough but there's one more thing you need to keep in mind as you begin to believe in this that Jesus' sacrifice is enough you got to be careful of two more people one person is you you is because you are sometimes your own worst critic it's when you begin to guilt trip yourself when you begin to punish yourself it's when you like Judas who didn't did something really bad to Jesus feel like I can never come back to Jesus I've disappointed him so much and it will be better if I hang myself 
and some people hang themselves emotionally some people hang themselves mentally some people hang themselves spiritually they may never do that physically God forbid but they will hang themselves in every area of their life because they feel like this is the way they can please God by showing to him when I am in pain you must be happy God said in Hebrews 11 6 once for all you want to make me happy trust me and sometimes that's harder than hurting yourself trust me don't hurt yourself I already did that there is no need to do that just trust me and everything is going to be enough God make it made it very seem there's no need to beat yourself why did Jesus die on the cross for that you have to receive that you cannot be your own worst critic if God forgave you why do you think you're better than God not to forgive yourself if God who is holy the Bible says in Job finds faults in angels standard is so high and he forgave you all of it do you think you're better than God your standards higher than God's that you cannot forgive yourself somehow you're bigger when you tell yourself I can never forgive myself for this I will never man, how could how could I how could I and when you go into that route what you're telling God is the reason why God you forgave me ah you have low standards I on the other hand have high standards don't be God if God gave it to you give it to yourself just receive it and say you know what if God is so holy could forgive such a wretched person like me I'm sure I'm not so holy I could forgive myself as well can somebody say amen can somebody put your hands together for this awesome Jesus but there is one more thing but there is one more thing not only God is on your side not only you have to because of Jesus now be your own advocate it means you're not against you you are for you I know this may sound weird for some of you but it's better that you get up in the mirror every day and you say you know what you handsome thing you're the best thing that I've ever seen in my life and I had the best time with you last night and I'm gonna live with you till the rest of my life and honestly I just like you you're successful you're handsome you're powerful you're just gonna make the best person you're gonna make a difference it's better that you do that instead of getting up in the mirror and say you fat ugly little thing worthless you're nobody you'll never amount and look at your eyes look at your nose look at your cheeks look at it you don't have a lamb inside you got a goat inside you got a demon inside you got to get the demon out when you realize Jesus died for your sin the first thing that comes is God is on your side it gives you so much pressure it removes so much, removes so much pressure but you know another thing that gives you it helps you not to be your enemy you already got demons against you why do you need to be against yourself you already have an enemy to fight don't make it difficult for yourself can somebody say amen but there's one more person that I'm going to end on is when you receive Jesus as your lamb you have to be care be careful of people who have a memory of your past but don't have an understanding of your lamb because they will constantly bring you back to what you did and they will remind you what you did who you did it with they will question constantly the genuineness of the changed life you're living right now some will actually stand on the side and tell you this we'll see how long this will last and that is the devil speaking to you in the human English voice you may say oh that's not possible ask Jesus when his own apostle Peter said Jesus don't go to the cross and Jesus looked around he said you devil get behind me if you only do not learn to discern when the enemy is trying to pull you down you're walking free from drugs you're walking free from partying you made some mistakes but you know Jesus has forgiven you and you're trying to make the good life and somebody comes along and says oh girl I remember when we did it you know I, I know this whole religion thing it will wear off in a few months call me after it does guess what you do under your breath get behind me Satan in the name of Jesus Satan in the name that Satan carrying the voice of Jose out in Jesus name 
Shaniqua, out in Jesus, whatever it is, whatever name and the voice is using, you got to, under your breath, you got to say, this is not from God, this is from the devil. Can somebody say amen? amen. When Apostle Paul was going through a shipwreck and he finally survived, he gathered the sticks together and the Bible says that he, he's trying to help everybody and a snake comes out and bites his hand. And the moment it bit his hand, the, all the, the people around started to say, he must be a murderer. See, he was supposed to die in the sea, he survived and now the fate does not allow him to live on. It found him here, he's gonna die. Paul could have said, oh my God, these people are prophetic. How do they know I used to kill and persecute Christians? Oh my goodness. I know God has forgiven me. I know I wrote a lot of the Bible, but I think this is God trying to say, hey Paul, I've forgiven you, but there are certain things you got to reap for what you sowed. You murdered Christians, you're going to have to also have to die like this. Paul didn't do that. You know what Paul did? The Bible says, he shook it off. And after he did, all of those people had a change of mind. They said, oh my goodness, Paul is God. <laughs> That's exactly how people will do. They will always say, you're worthless. You slept around. You're a slut. You're a pervert. You're a womanizer. You're, you, you're just worthless. You'll never, anything, you just, anywhere you come, trouble comes. And they will always label you like that. And if you let that sink in, that viper will kill you. Shake that viper off. Sometimes you gotta delete those text messages. Sometimes you gotta block that person and say, you know what? No, 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 no. I am redeemed. I am justified. I am forgiven. And Jesus Christ is my redeemer. I may be a single mom, but listen, I am not a lone person. Jesus is on my side. I may have done this and that and made mistakes and everybody in the city knows but so did Peter deny Jesus and a month later he was a pastor of apostolic church. People who say I cannot go to the church. Why? Well the leaders of the church used to do such a bad things. I feel bad for you because if you would be alive when Jesus started his church you wouldn't be able to go to Jesus' church because pastor Peter denied Jesus just 50 days ago. Can somebody say amen? amen? Be careful of people around you because they are sent by the devil to bring you down. Walk forward with God. Do not look behind. Let people say what they want to say. Remember, haters gonna hate. <laughs> Can somebody say amen? and walk in who Jesus says about you make a difference don't try to prove anybody wrong because most likely if Jesus after his resurrection did not take a trip to Pharisee's house and say hey guys I gotta prove to you I am alive if Jesus couldn't prove Pharisees wrong what makes you think you will the best thing to do is to leave those people alone focus on reaching the lost focus on reaching your destiny and focus on living for Jesus Christ your past is behind you your future is in front of you and the most important Holy Ghost is on your side can somebody say amen can somebody say praise the Lord and somebody say if God is for me say if God is for me who can be against me say if God is for a nation who can be against her can you answer that question no one. Turn to your neighbor say no one. Turn to your neighbor say I'm for you. Say I'm not the hater. I believe in you. Say you're gonna make a difference and when you make a difference and make a lot of money you'll share it with me. <laughs> Come on let's put, put your hands together for Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I want you to bow your heads right now. Just close your eyes. Bow your head just for a moment. Close your eyes.